Hi, and welcome to Complete and Cast, the official podcast for Complete and Box video games. Today in episode 35, we're taking a spooky turn. <laughs> Game review number 12 with Parker once again. Hey! Hey! You, we should have saved this for 13. <sighs> Dang. Oh, we let's review out. something else instead. Let's, uh... <laughs> Uh, something for the 3DO. Let's talk about that for about a half hour. <laughs> so, so today we are we are talking um, Outlast and Whistleblower. Um, so recently, Outlast Trinity came out on the PS4. It's a collection that has Outlast, Outlast Whistleblower, which is a DLC for the original Outlast, and Outlast 2. Now, the reason we're doing Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower together is clearly they're kind of meant to be the case. Whistleblower right. is a DLC for Outlast 1, and they but just, it is it is long. It is almost yes, as long yes, as the yes. first. It's, one. it's a DLC. So it's where not it's, like just a little extra. It's it's a decent sized game. It's it's almost like a, a um, it's the same. I don't know. It's almost like a sequel, but not really. Whatever. Right. So um, it it is it is a decently long game. And when we were doing it, I I, I think we figured we wouldn't have enough to talk. There's no reason to talk about one and whistleblower separate because right. they take place in the same place. Absolutely. And they take yeah. place. It's like a the prequel. It's like a prequel, but then they somehow mold together. So, Outlast is a very, in the video game world, famous game. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's like... Uh, Just because, like, me, famous let me, for let me, being let me, scary? Let me, say, let me say it this way. In the video game world, it's a very infamous game. Okay. Where it's, synon it's... it's synonymous with scary games. Okay, got it. So... It... Like is this is this the game that they make YouTubers play and scream? Absolutely. Okay, like it. so this it's be, it's like it's, it's like playing that Slenderman game. Or it's something. grown out of it, it. It's so Atlas was is made by a like a very small company. Yeah. Red Barrel. Right. I think. Yep. Right. That's okay. Right. So it it's a yeah. It's, you can this, tell this it's happens once indie, in a while, like in in, in in the world of media, where it's like you have something and it's its own thing in its own right, and it becomes something bigger than it is. And that's what Outlast is. It's like you you see a PewDiePie video and he's playing like a horror game. It's like this is the OG right. that started that kind of got thing. It, got it's it. not that old. It came out in twenty in twenty thirteen, and it's very important to note that it is not the first type of game that's done this. Right. Um, Amnesia: The Dark Descent came out right. in twenty ten, yep. and there were actually three Penumbra games yeah, made by the that's same company. Oh my goodness! So yeah. like that was like mid two thousand. Yeah, that's a long so, time ago. And those are excellent. So this this is this is just one of those things right. that. That it just, um, I guess, not even became bigger than its britches, but became more than it is. Right. It happens sometimes, you know. Right. You you, you have because it is like an indie studio that probably didn't have a lot of budget for marketing, so it was just kind of like, well, let's hope that it's. I, I think the best analogy for what Outlast became, I think you can mostly find that in music. It's tougher right. in movies because indie movies, like, very rarely it's like, we made this indie movie. Right. BT Dubs, it made $200 million. But a lot of times with, like, the smaller bands that, like, just kind of come out of nowhere, uh, an amazing example is the Stone Roses, which was a British band in the 80s. They were just this band that came out with an album, Stone, the, the first Stone Roses album, and all of a sudden, literally everyone in England was like, this is the next Beatles. Right. And that is not, like, that is not, like, that, that is what they said. That's right. not just me being like, oh, it's right. like, they were like, this is the next Beatles. So this band that's just like, we just, we like our music and put out an right. album was like, we're now they were the Beatles. To, right. right. We're not prepared now, to be now the Beatles. Now they were literally the Beatles in, by the way, England. Right. <laughs> so it's like even worse. Right. So, they, uh, so then it's like, come out with a second album. The, their story like, is they no. came out with a second album. And in Trevor's and Mai's opinion, I actually don't like Stone Roses 1. It's a little too airy and whatever for me. 2 came out and was like, Different and like way more like 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 uh, experimental. And I like it quite a bit, but everybody hated it because it wasn't, it wasn't Stone Roses. It wasn't what they wanted, or right? Whatever. And and then right. they broke up. They had two albums. So like I think that's that's that. This is what Outlast has become. Outlast is synonymous. You say like Outlast, gotcha. it's like jump scare, spooky game. Got it. Okay. So uh, I I going into this, I had no idea about anything about Outlast except that I knew that it was a, a like a survival horror type game, but. Other than that, and and also because it's Trinity is because it's the because of the release of Outlast Two. So I had heard Outlast Two was coming out. I had heard news about that, but like as it was, I was like, oh, there's a second one. I didn't even know the first one existed. Like and, I was unaware. And of that's it. that's a big thing to note for this is that um, I love horror games. It's if, with horror games, it's a love hate relationship. And I have talked about this before, and this will come up again. In that. You really shouldn't enjoy horror games, right? Like, whereas you shouldn't if you if you watch like horror movies like Human Centipede and like 
enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, like that, you I, have something wrong with you. Yeah, something's going on there. Right. So like, you should feel on edge. You should right. you should yeah. feel uneasy. If you enjoy just like the stress of it and the oh, what's gonna happen and getting grossed out and being like oh gosh, like and, that's fine, and that's but. that's that's the point uh, that you know when I'm going through this and that like when we talk about enjoying it, it's like I didn't. It's like fun. Did you have fun? It's like well, it's a hard game. You don't have fun. Right. You know, like right. it is what it is. And uh, one other thing to mention is I'm I'm very well versed and very much like horror games, so I'm kind of like a snob in the in the game sense, not the horror movie sense, <laughs> right, but the game right. sense. Whereas Parker is much much newer to this. Yeah, you know? I'm not a I'm not a horror game guy. I, I I'm a horror movie guy for sure. I mean, not not like super crazy, but I've watched every like good horror movie that's ever been made. Like where. Uh, uh, like as as in like it's a movie that that makes it to good movie lists, not just oh this is a really good horror movie. Like anytime a horror movie breaks into like this is a good movie, Cabin period. in the Woods kind of thing, right? Where it's like, like an actual yeah. good movie, right? Right. But you're like, not watching like Human yeah. Centipede four, or right? Whatever. Right. So, yeah. The, the, there's it's movies good like that's gross, you right? Know? Like the Orphanage or you know the Baba Duke or these other movies that have come out in the last like five ten years. Uh, I'm on board for a lot of horror movies for sure, even though I'm stressed out by them. Uh, but but horror games it's diff- puts it to another it's level because for games. you're controlling it. And, like, and this is a first person absolutely. game, so I absolutely. have much more to say about the gameplay. But uh, well, um, we, we we judge on six different categories. Uh, so it's uh, story, gameplay, sound, graphics and atmosphere, fun factor, and replayability. And once again, uh, we, we uh, um, graded on a scale from uh, 0 to 10. A 5 is completely average. Uh, so if something gets a 5, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's average. So with that being said, let's go into the story. Now, the most important thing to mention, because we will be combining the stories here, is that Outlast and Whistle... Uh, um, Outlast is... The, is uh, How do I put this? Whistleblower is technically a little bit of a prequel to Outlast. And, and not only that, Whistleblower is kind of happening at, at the same... Before... Well, it starts out a prequel, and then it ends up at the same time. Right, right. so out so Outlast Whistleblower starts as a prequel, but it goes longer than Outlast. And well, then... slightly. Yeah, sl- yeah, like just barely longer. Right. But yeah, like they basically end up at the same spot. So it's like telling two different stories, but one starts, you know, so when a we, few days prior. When we talk about stories, we cannot... We're, we're constantly going to be mix-matching the stories here. Yeah, it is yeah. impossible because they take place in the same place, and right. Outlast happens because Whistleblower exists exactly. the way that they do right. it. You right. cannot possibly separate them. So yeah. you, you, you start off, you're an investigative uh, in, uh, journalist named Miles, Miles right. right? and you uh, come to this... Um, uh, uh, Pena, um, insane asylum in Colorado, right. and it's it. Of course, massive it has to be. Mountain. It has to be very remote. I, mean, I, I, I was rolling my eyes when it was called Massive Mountain, but I was like, okay, like like that's a little on the nose for me. A massive Mountain. It's like, okay, what's happening? And of course, it's in the middle of nowhere, and there's yeah. nothing there, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you know what? You're better at these ones with me. I'll let, I'll let you start out with this, and I'll chime in as I uh, as yeah. I go. So you show up. You're an investigative journalist. Uh, so your whole thing is like, which I appreciated that they like went that level because like that was something that, you know, always bothered me in, in some of these games like RE7 and stuff is where it's like, uh, you're, you're this guy who needs to help someone and yet you call nobody to help you along. But an investigative journalist makes sense because like you, if you call the cops, then you might not get the story you're looking for. So there's like this kind of like fight between like I want to get the story and scoop it, but at the same time I want to you know not die. <laughs> Obviously, no one wants to die, but you can't you know you got to try to find that line because if you call the cops in, then you don't get the story because the cops just swoop in and it all just gets covered up or who knows what. And your whole thing is you're investigating stuff and you get a tip from an email that not only is some crazy stuff happening, but uh, they kind of give you a, a clue that it might even be, like, uh, shadow government-y type stuff. So, like, and, like, that's your style. It, like, you're, you're being sent this email because some guy knows that you're that kind of investigative journalist that's, like, fighting against a shadow government. So, like, 
you know that you can't just call the cops because, like, that's a weird it's, thing. It's all they're all in on it. It's a cool lead up to the story in that he, it's not like he sent it to s- at CNN or whatever. Exactly. It's like he sent it to this dude because exactly. this is the dude yes. for this, right? He and he may have sent it to a few other guys like him, you know, like hoping that one of them would bite. But you know, you're the guy that bu- that bit, and you go, and you go and check this out. Um, so you show up at this asylum, and you're just basically like, it's all run down and there's no like I mean it, it looks like it hasn't been used in years so you're just like oh what is this place and it seems abandoned but there is power because you see some lights inside so you're just like okay let's find out what's going on you get uh, a you pick up your video camera and you just go and that's that's it so you're like into this thing and you're just basically trying to find out what's happening um, over the course of your investigations you find some really scary people uh like that have lost touch with reality uh you know that were clearly patients at this insane asylum um and you you know you find some um files about them and you just you know see how like once they were not being treated anymore uh their descent into madness went to another level so you have like there's like a big hulking guy uh, who has like basically cut off uh, the skin around his nose and his mouth, and other skin on his head, like because he's like whatever, and he's you know acts as some kind of crazy security and walks around like uh, chasing you at times, but also like killing other you know, it, um, uh, inmates and just you know basically just being terrifying. You find like a uh, a priest who like. It, you know, is completely delusional that he's some kind of like uh, that he's some kind of like great Masonic. You know, I don't. He's Pro- like maybe basically a prophet. He's yeah. He's basically trying to tap into some sort of higher thing, and he calls you a, an apostle. Uh, and he's he basically, even though like it, you know, at first you know, I was kind of thinking maybe he was the one that sent the email, even though he seemed completely out of it, uh, because he immediately latches onto you that you're this apostle. And to the point where, uh, you know, pretty early on, like, you get to a guy, like, you get to a, uh, a a guard, basically, like, who, like, looks really a lot more uh, outfitted than you would expect a guard at an insane asylum. Like, he's wearing, like, body armor and riot gear and, like, all sorts of craziness. And you find him, like, impaled on something and he's half alive and he's, like get out of here <laughs> like right and you're like okay maybe it's time to leave and like so you know true to like i thought that i appreciated that you know you do d- basically are like okay let's leave like that's immediately the first like thing to do I, you get in and you immediately your objective is to leave like you're like that's it i made a but, mistake kind of thing yeah and, that, and that's that's a huge thing right. where it with Horror movies. That's that's the big meme with them, where it's like, "Why are you doing this?" Stop yeah, it, you know exactly. And this does a good job of being like, "Yeah, maybe he went a little too far," but it's like it's it's his. You can understand a good investigative journalist like ah, I'm going, you know, right? Yeah, they go to they, in real life they go oh, to like yeah. war torn places Absolutely. that I'm like, dude, I would never go to like wherever you are, yeah, you know, in the Middle East. But it's like I'm there because that's just what I do. Yeah, I gotta know? find the story and like and and you know you get in these just situations that you're like, you there's a fine line of finding that point where you're like okay, it's time to be done with the story. Or, like, let me push it a little harder. And so, you know, you you try to find out what's going on. You immediately realize, okay, I got to get out of here. And uh, and right when you're about to leave, uh, you get, you know, thrown through uh, a window by the big giant hulking guy. And then you also get uh, thwarted by the, the father, Brown or whatever, this, like, mentally deranged guy and and so like you know you you basically need to unlock the doors so you like turn on the power you try to unlock the doors and as soon as you do that the father's there with some anesthetic and he stabs you and you wake up in a cell so you're like oh geez like so it's one of those things where it's just like keeps getting worse you keep getting deeper in against your own will um and you're just trying to get out at that point like you're not really even uh, necessarily investigating, but because that's your nature, you basically are still you got your camera, so you're still recording stuff, uh, and you write you get these notes that are written down by uh, Miles 
to tell the story as as you go. Um, and and you you're you basically just trying to get out, but it leads you deeper and deeper in until you finally find there's an underground basement laboratory. Uh, over time, you've been finding these files that have been re- alluding to not only the the patients that you're encountering, but also like files from like the 40s talking about MK Ultra and other CIA mind control stuff from World War II, uh, and also some like. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, um, what's the word? Like, uh, urban tales about, like, the, uh, you know, crazy old stories about, like, Nazis, uh, you know, uh, studying people and figuring out, you know, weird occult stuff and all sorts of nonsense. So it, so it kind of co- co- combines it all into one little thing of, of, like, this mind control and trying to break the mind and figure out all this stuff. And it's very important to note before you get into, like, the whole big reveal of everything is that this game um, doesn't give you... It doesn't give you too much on the base. Right. All you see on the base is all this crazy stuff's happening. Obviously, you realize, like, I had a little bit of a difficult time at first figuring if the father was a good guy or bad. Like, right. and, and in the end, it's, it's all gray. Where, right. like, he was not the baddest yeah, but he but was he was also like very deranged in that like right. you had a chance to leave and then he's like nope cuz you need to no, you, need you need to, to spread the word be part of you, this you, whole thing and and so it at first you kind of just think that it's an insane asylum that the 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 patients were not treated very well until finally they were treated so not well that they took over and then things just deteriorated from there uh but then you find out that there's this extra, like, there's this, um, um, like, research being done on individuals where they're actually being, like, put through crazy testing and all sorts of stuff to break them as individuals uh, until they're finally, like, completely gone. Uh, and it's basically all centered around trying to find the perfect specimen to... Um, create a soldier that can use these nanotechnology uh, that's controlled, mind-controlled nanotechnology. Uh, there's these references to this wall rider demon, and you think it's like, maybe it's, the you know, there's like this folklore about the mountain that you're on is that inhabited by a demon and blah, blah, blah. But it turns out it's basically just the, all this mental mind-control stuff. And uh, so they find this perfect candidate to get into this like pod and then he's able he's completely hooked up like his brain and his body is hooked up into this whole like network and then with that you're able he's able to control these nanotechnology and they manifest themselves into like a human-ish shaped shadowy figure very similar to what you would imagine like a demon or a ghost to be like and it has you know the power of like nanotechnology which, you know, is just kind of like pseudoscience. I mean, it's real, but it's like the the way they present it is like far out where it's like able to just like wreck shop so it becomes like a telekinetic god or something like where it's just like lifting guys up and throwing them to pieces and, you know, like going inside of a body and like exploding them out. Like picture like uh, Neo jumping into Agent Smith at the end of yep. the Matrix or something. Like, so it's like that kind of stuff where it's just like, for flying around and blowing stuff up and it, it is important to mention that that once you find that out things do start and I'll give my opinion on what I think about it but the the fact of the matter is things make more sense then yes so like when you first go in you're like how do these like right how do these like uh, uh, some of the people you see are normal like the father is a normal crazy guy right right he's just but then he's just you also see touch. like that huge guy who messes right. up with his face who is like nine feet tall and like whatever right. and like no one's that big and there's also people right. who seem and like there's, there's genetically two, there's altered. two brothers that are that look normal but they're clearly completely out of it they're completely naked and they're like muttering to themselves and they chase you around and there's some other like people that clearly lost touch but look in some way like you know, manip- like are uh, uh, mutilated in some way. I was just wondering, like the the whole time, like some of these characters would have like very mutilated faces. Like you meet a doctor at some point who it's not a huge story point, right. but he he captures you and he tried his experiment on you. And I'm like, and this dude, like he's with it enough to be like, so so like some of the guys, like the big guy, uh, uh, what's the big guy's name again? Uh, Chris 
Walker, I think. Uh, that makes... So, Chris is clearly, like... He was an ex-military. Like, they, they find a, 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 you know, a file about him. But he's, like... He's basically Special Forces ex-military that they, like... Uh, it's, it's, it's not clear whether he was already admitted or if he was, like, maybe a guy that was stationed there and that who, like, pissed the wrong person off and then got admitted or maybe was just chosen and then just went down the wrong path. It's, it, you know, it, they don't really explain a lot, like, on purpose. And it, so I guess it, what you have to, like, imagine is that they were experimenting on in different ways because Chris's is way more, like, a physical manifestation right. than his, like, his, like, brain isn't there so much and that all he's, like, he says, like, five words. He's like, right. little piggy, you know, whatever. Right. But the doctor is, like, is, like, right. if you just listen to him talk, you'd be, like, oh, this is a normal dude. Like, if right. you were just, like, not paying attention, but then he ends up just being crazy and I, he right. uh, cuts off your finger and, you yeah. know, whatever. So it's, like, clearly, like, the manifestation is different in these right. different types of people. And his and he also looked like maybe he was burned or something. Yeah, his, his like, was very... His skin is real stretched out and weird. So it's hard to say, like... Like, it, it's hard to say whether it was, like, general mind control testing... Uh, and then some people like reacted in different ways, or if it all was trying to find this, you know, perfect candidate uh, for the super soldier or whatever. Uh, it's hard to say like which one. I'm assuming that it's just basically like because these people are being tested on, they just break in different ways, and you have some that break and become like big hulking, like crazy people, and then you have ones where they're like. You know they're they're a lot more with it, uh, and they're not attacking you like physically, like the father. But they're still like completely out of it. And, and you also meet people who are literally so out of it that they're like comatose. They're alive, but right. they're just sitting there. Right. And yeah. I thought it was a good and bad thing. And it was good because it like sets the atmosphere where you walk into a room and there's like six guys sitting there, and they're not going to come after you. But right. it's a bad thing in that, like, sometimes you didn't know. And I guess, I guess, I guess that's bad in terms of like me being like scared and whatever, and maybe good overall in terms of like, wow, what's the line? What did they do here? You yeah, know, yeah, kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, you do encounter a lot. Like you, you know, there's there's things that are chasing you and attacking you, but you do encounter a lot of individuals that don't have anything to do with you. They run by you. They run into a door and lock it. They do all sorts. Yeah, you're in like, like so you, you're in cell blocks, and there's right. like a dozen people there, yeah. and the only people who go after you are the two crazy twins. So right. I guess it, you know, yeah, maybe it's the, different stuff. Maybe whatever. you can imagine that the ones that were already like aggressive before this are now more hyper aggressive, and right. the ones that were just like psychotic and that they were just like imagining the walls were on fire. They're right. just worse that way. They just, yeah, they to... just get they just regressed inside themselves to where they don't even like interact with reality and but and it's very important i think i i think i led to this but i, I want to harp on it again it's very important to note that very little of this do you find out besides what physically happens you right. have to find these notes and you have to read right. these notes For and sure. whatever and as yeah you, if you're if you're if you're like not reading any of the notes um which you know we'll get to in gameplay but basically you have to have your camera up and have recorded certain uh, things like a, like a writing on a wall, or if you see somebody like yelling at you, if you don't have your camera up, you won't get a note. Like your notes only happen when you're recording things, um, and when you're recording things, it'll appear a little thing, and then you could read a note, and so that's how you're getting story. So you can miss some story points uh, just because you're not like. You know, like, you didn't happen to catch it, you know. Yeah. Like, you missed a file, because there's files in all these different rooms and stuff, just like in every other game. Uh, and if you miss one, you miss one. And, and sometimes it might have been an important one. In general, I think the major ones are easy to find. Usually or pretty in obvious. Your, in your way. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if, if you miss one, or if you're just too busy or whatever, it's it can happen. But, uh, so... You know the the you, you know you lead up to this part and the father basically like lights himself on fire and crucifies himself because he's like gonna ascend to some higher plane or whatever and that's like you're supposed to be thinking that's in, involved with the with the wall rider demon stuff but you eventually find that basement laboratory and it takes a much bigger turn and like Spencer said it makes a lot more sense at that point um, and then we, we can probably segue to whistleblower. Uh, so when you find the basement laboratory, you can kind of cut, like, Whistleblower takes place, a, like, a few days or maybe a week before uh, Miles shows up. 
uh, and you're playing the guy that sent the email, this guy Park, you're a... Um, he is literally the whistleblower on right. the crazy uh, exactly. shadow government stuff. Yeah. He's a uh, he's a computer uh, analyst programmer, uh, so you're there to like help write the program that uh, that helps uh, Billy uh, control the nanotechnology. And you're there while they're trying different candidates, and they try one candidate, and he you know they're trying to put him in one of these pods, and he breaks free uh, of. The you know and he runs up to the window and he's like screaming at the window like oh help me help me you know like whatever and so like clearly you're being like you're slightly affected by this uh but you know you know you're surrounded by these like higher ups that are like get out of here you know like get back to your workstation or whatever and, and that's a, that's a cool part of the atmosphere they like bring you in and they're like sit down and you do it and they're like Mister Blah is leaving now isn't he and you're like. I'm leaving now. And, like, yeah. You can imagine, like, that's, yeah. I guess, how yeah. it would be. Yeah, exactly. And so you decide to go send this email and so that when you go back to your workstation, uh, your email, uh, your laptop is you be, is currently, uh, there's a, this higher-up management type guy is on your uh, laptop and he sees what you did uh, and, and you're like, oh, no, and so you, you feel like you've gotten caught. Uh, he, like, you know, smashes your laptop and then, like, basically calls in the guards and then like you know like i'm sure happens many times in this place at from finding the 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 files it seems like this would happen is that anybody that got suspicious they are like oh you hear that he's starting to act crazy and they like admit you to the hospital and you become like just another patient so you wake up who knows how long later you're in one of the cells you're being uh subjected to the wall rider video which is like this weird rorschach test kind of thing where it's like it's a picture like uh if, if anybody's ever seen like clockwork orange or something but it's just the idea that there's like some images that are that you're not allowed to not see because you're in like a rig where you're facing this thing so anytime you open your eyes you're seeing this like sequence of symbols and images and stuff and it's and and this weird unsettling like m not music but like sound like a horn and stuff and it's just like uh very unsettling uh but it's that's what's supposed to unlock this uh this potential uh to control the nanotechnology uh because when you're playing as miles the notes that you uh, write down slowly become more and more unhinged where you start, uh, you at one point you see the video, you go to a, like a theater as Miles, cutting back to uh, Outlast 1, uh, you see in the theater the, the, the Wall Rider video and you look at it and then as soon as you look at it from that point on a lot of your notes start saying like every time i close my eyes i see the images or like there's a buzzing in my head or like i feel static and you know it's you you basically see this guy descend into madness and they and, start i forget if it was one or whistleblower they start talking about the machine like yes, the machines right. always go and the there's machines this, always there's running. this thing called the uh the engine the morphographic engine and that's the whole thing that's the thing that controls the nanotechnology and it and they talk about it in the files and it makes it sound like it's a physical thing turns out it's kind of just like the whole like um you know mind like control thing like it's so it's sort of physical in that there's the setup but at the same time like it is it is like metaphysical in the sense that it's like your mind like what is your mind like you know is it just the thing inside your brain or you know does your consciousness you know reach out beyond yourself and all sorts of stuff like that so it, it definitely touches on that but yeah so cutting back to whistleblower you're the guy you wake up you're captured and then now your whole thing is to get out uh you don't know how long you've been captured but things have deteriorated they basically found the right candidate the one that becomes the wall rider like thing, nanotechnology, the Billy guy. So he gets found while you're captured and he starts wrecking shop and that's when everything starts going to hell. So you wake up and you're like, I got to get out of here and you, you know, start to get out uh, and your whole thing is to escape and you find out a little bit more information, not too much. Whist Whistleblower's story is much more simple besides yeah. the, the early part where you f find that huge thing. Right. Um, Other than that, like the, you don't learn too much more story. You don't, you know, uh, 
you basically find out uh, anytime you find files, it's usually files about whatever characters are chasing you. And so in the whistleblower, there's two characters that chase you. There's like a uh, like a cook that's like lost it. He has like a bone saw, and he like obviously is cutting people up. You find like like a, a pot with like body parts in it and stuff so clearly it's you know pseudo cannibal type nonsense and so he chases you around a bit so when you're when you're in that part you find the files you find are like about him and his you know mental break and then you eventually get start getting chased by this uh this guy that's like uh trying to make a bride the perfect By the way, bride. My, my favorite character i mean yeah. it, it was definitely yeah, he was, definitely my favorite character he, he was, was he was like, uh, imagine like, uh, he, 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 what he was playing on was like the 1950s, yes. like Ar- Ar- Archie, Archie yes. from Archie Comics kind right. of thing, where he was yep. just like, oh, but geez, even to honey. Beaver, like, oh, geez, well, honey, I think know. actually what it was was his name was Eddie, and I think. It, they did say it was based on Eddie Haskell from Leave It to Beaver specifically, gotcha. like gotcha. that was his thing. Because apparently he was as a kid abused, uh, molested, whatever, and had been repressing all this stuff. And he like kind of lost himself in the the stuff that was on TV at the time. So he would watch Leave It to Beaver and just like imagine that he's in that thing. Uh, but then obviously, you know, as he grew older and then was tested on this facility, he l- mental break and then now is like making a bride and it's really, really gross and nonsense. Like he's basically, uh, there, there was a, there was some stuff, a little bit of stuff in, in one and a lot more whistleblower. They talk about, uh, cause you don't really see any women. Even though there is a female ward of right. the asylum, you never see any women. And one of the things that they talk about is that there, there's there's a different um, reaction that women have to the, the the testing and the process, where they would have these uh, they would have these psychosomatic pregnancies, which is like a really like as a is a real thing that happens where like a a woman can have like this something that happens in their brain that they feel like they're pregnant and their body will go through pregnancy stuff where it will grow like something will grow in your uterus but it will be like fluid but it will grow in a way that makes your belly like extend and makes you feel like you're pregnant and you'll have all these signals that you're pregnant like your body will do this weird stuff but you don't have anything inside you it's just like you know, like fluid and gas and whatever, and like a cyst. Hmm. It's like crazy, but like it is a real thing that does happen. And so they kind of touch on that. And so a lot of the women have been like transported out of the facility to somewhere else. Uh, it's unclear whether they're also being tested on somewhere else. But since there's no women around, this Eddie guy basically creates women by, you know, uh, taking a these the men that are there and making them into women and that's so. that's the hardest scene in this entire <laughs> yeah. game is where you're on this like plank and then yeah. a circular saw is heading towards oh. the park I and mean, you watch him do it to another person and then basically you have to live it and uh and it's like oh my god like and you find some of his creations like where it's like he basically made like a, a woman giving birth basically made out of a bunch of body parts and you know from other people and it's like very unsettling yeah but luckily but, you, you do get out of the scene at the last second yeah because he gets he like, gets attacked by one of one of the other inmates it's it's a pretty brutal part especially <laughs> yeah. um specifically to mention outlast one's main character gets like mentally kind of messed up at the end right outlast whistleblowers guy gets very physically yeah, hurt yeah, by he, the end so he, he near, gets beaten near he the, gets thrown out of windows he breaks his legs oh, and uh, one important thing to mention story-wise is um he gets knocked out several times for long periods of right. time including by that eddie guy right and because of that whistleblower ends even though it starts earlier than outlast right. one does end at the same at the same time exactly. right about yeah. anyway yeah so, so because at um, one point you when you're a whistleblower the park guy you look out a window and you see a fire and he and you realize it's the chapel and that's when uh so that happens after the priest lights himself yeah. on fire and crucifies himself so you see the the ch- chapel on fire um and so like you're like oh okay so these things are happening coincidentally 
coinciding. And that's when it starts to whatever. And so it ends. So, uh, so Outlast, I mean, if we didn't mention it, like, basically ends with you kill Billy, the host for the nanotechnology, so that the wall rider will go away. And you do it, and you're like, oh, I did it. I'm, I've, I'm finally done. And you start making your way out of the facility. Uh, and as you do, these these big doors open, and all of a sudden there's this, like, shadow government, like, SWAT team, and they're like, you know, like, get down, get down, whatever, and you have your hands up or whatever, and the one in front just, like, starts shooting you. <laughs> like, he shoots you once, and then you're like, but you're you maybe just in the arm, and you kind of, like, are still awake, and then he just, like, unloads his clip into you. Like, because they're not messing around. Like, they're like, and understandably so, like, this place is just, like, full of insane people, like, and they're showing up to, like, clean it up, like, umbrella style or yeah, whatever, yeah, where yeah. it's just, like, kill everything and just raise it to the ground. And so they show up and they shoot you and you hear a voice in your head. Uh, the, the, you, I guess we didn't mention that in, when you're in the basement laboratory, you do come across this guy, Wernicke, who you heard reference to from like the 40s, like during the war, like he's like an old Nazi, like, uh, you know, high up scientist. And you hear stuff like a lot of, a lot of the testing is based on his research and then you find him in the basement laboratory. He's, like, in this, like, uh, hermetically sealed little cell, like, and it's, like, there's, like, blood and explosions everywhere, and then his perfect cell is, like, he has artwork and, like, a nice little, like, furnished, like, cell, and he's in, he's confined to a wheelchair and clearly, like, half alive, like, he's being kept alive by machinery, but he is, like, still with well it. with it. He's, like, you know, 100% directing a lot of the, like, science behind this stuff. And he's, like, talks to you about, like, what's happening. And he basically tells you that you need to shut off Billy so that he the nanotechnology goes away. And that's what leads you down that path. So after you do that and this guy starts shooting you, you hear that Wernicke guy's voice and he says something along the lines of, now you are the host. And you see the nanotechnology, like, like the shadowy nonsense, like, kind of fill you up. And then you, like, they're like, oh, God! And, like, the screen kind of cuts to black with, like, these cops just, like, starting to, like, scream. And you hear gunfire. And they're, like, getting destroyed by you, presumably. Uh, but, like, you know, being possessed or however you want to refer to it by this nanotechnology wall rider. Um, and so you, like you like wreck shop or whatever. And then like, so then when you're cutting back to whistleblower, you're trying to get out of the lab, you're trying to get out of the asylum. You finally get out after being beaten like a billion I times. I want to mention real quick that one of the, one of the coolest parts for me story wise was when you're leaving, you see a lot of these SWAT guys yeah. fighting. Ass right. Assumably you hear the, the gun shot fire. Yeah. The new, the miles became the, you know, nano machines right. guys. So. Exactly. And you hear like, Oh, like off in the distance and whatever. And so you, uh, you get outside and you see lo and behold, the Jeep that miles shows up in out in front of the courtyard. So you're like, Oh, thank God. So you limp. Cause at this point you've been like destroyed. So you have like your one legs broken and you got, you know, so you're like limping. So it's very stressful. Cause you're just like, go, go, go. And you get in the car and you're like, you know, okay, you start the car, you start pulling out, and you look up at the the asylum, and lo and behold, there's Miles in his shadowy nanotechnology, like, you could see it, like, around him, and you're like, ah, so you just basically, like, you know, back up and take off, and, you know, and then it ends there, so you really don't know, like, maybe... Uh, he caught up with you and killed you, or maybe you got away. Like, you, you know, they don't really like, you know, I, I think, you know, like they try to, they try to keep things a little ambiguous because they want it, you know, they want it to be like that kind of horror movie style where it's always like ends with like, or is it, you know, like, you know, you always see the hand jump up at the end, like, oh, you know? so that's the story. Right. Now I want to talk my opinion on this because yeah. this is, this is a very strong opinion one of the general, like, memes or whatever you want to call it of Ugh, stories that I hate <laughs> is the freaking 
Basement laboratory slash shadow government. Absolutely. So if I'm looking at this, if you're looking at it story-wise... When you're going around and when you're figuring out that, you know, or when you're just like, everything's crazy and you're like trying to piece it together and the father is telling you, come here, come here, come here, whatever, and you're putting it together, awesome. Right. Right? Great. Awesome. Yeah. Then when, and like even reading about the World War II stuff and you're like, whoa, and like you read yeah. about these guys and you're like, this is great. When the big reveal is that it's a like a basement laboratory that yep. they're working on people. Yep. I get it. It like technically works, right. but it's like very like I don't know if it's lazy or just like yeah. just like um uh, uninspired. It's yeah. like the, I feel like liter- okay. So literally if the the rationale between everyone being so crazy was literally a like portal to hell was opened like, almost like a... You know how Half-Life it kind of starts right, out that way? Right, I would be, like, more comfortable with that than, like, a nanomachines, they're subjecting people to it. Again, it makes sense. Like, if you're like, oh, okay, that's why everyone's crazy. You look at it, you're like, great. But it's like, maybe I didn't need to know that. Maybe they, they didn't need to go in that direction. Like, maybe they could have gone in a different direction or just left it as... Wow, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, and they leave it right. like very open. Right, like, like I, was like, I very... imagine an asylum that has crazy people in it. If everybody abandoned it and you let that asylum fall to pieces, like that in and of itself is a story. It could have been, it, they and like have, uh... everybody's weird neuroses like took over, and that became like the major, like, whatever. Uh, again, like, this, this is just me thinking here, but it could have been, and again, this is a little Resident Evil-ish, but say for some reason some sort of virus was released, and that's why everyone started getting crazy. Again, it's believable, it makes sense, and it doesn't involve, like, like a shadow government kind right, of thing. Right, I just, I, like, I just hate, there's, there's, I mentioned it before in this episode, there's one piece of media that does that type of thing right, and it's Cabin in the Woods. Right. It's the only one ever that does right. that thing where it's like, there's a big overlapping thing that that controls all this because right. it's like well even then, that even then it's it. even then it was at least original because it's like yeah there's this sh- like like overarching shadow government whatever you want to refer to it controlling everything but like even that the whole reason that is exists is to keep like an elder god satisfied so right. like the whole at thing least, is yeah, like right, right, is like right, that right. so which is like wow that that like was another level but even if, even if, uh, like, so, yeah, so, but yeah, even, even if they didn't go that ending route with Cabin in the Woods, they did do a good job of just being like, they control everything. Right. But, but yeah, like, like I it, said, it's, this has got to be a top five, like, overdone thing that I do not like. Like, right. and again. Oh, well, it was like when we were playing Resident Evil 7 and you were like, the little girl, and you just started rolling your eyes. Like, as soon as there's a little girl some, controlling Sometimes stuff. in horror things like this, you don't need to, like, make it more than it is. It can right. be like a crazy ins- asylum that you're like, everyone's trying to kill you, everything's nuts, and either leave it at that or maybe make it a little more... Um, they try to make it like almost like science like right. and based in reality, when in reality, probably what I was looking for is like, make it as crazy as possible. Right. Make it that literally when you get to the end, there is like a literal demon sitting there right. and he just eats your soul. Right. And it's like, cool. I've seen, I've played horror games and seen stuff like that where you get to the end and it's like, Dude, there is no happy ending here. You're like, every, oh, you know, yeah. whatever. Every, everybody, everybody's dead. Oh, by the way, you know, it's just like, again, in the cabin the, in the woods where it's like, well, everything's over, right? Like, uh, yeah. So it's like, I, I hate that. I hate that meme. I hate that thing. I like, I just, ugh. Yeah. Like, and, and um, one other thing I want to mention that I particularly hated was, although the character himself shouldn't, uh, the Miles in the, in the first one specifically, shouldn't have been like a very complex character because he's more just... It, I, he's more just the means that you're going through the thing, and it's more like almost the camera is the main character, right? Yeah. Whatever. So he doesn't have to be complex or anything, but the way he wrote Ugh, down his notes writings. was so uh, cringe, right? Okay. Uh, I'm so I, glad you agree with uh, me. Uh, because, I almost like, turned it off from when, that. Like, when he was, when he would be the, like the very first uh, note, the very first note about Chris Walker. Uh, I mean, I won't say it because you know we try to keep this good. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of. It's a, very this is a mature game. it's a super mature game. Very mature game. But his notes are usually have a lot of profanity in them. But he basically the way he describes Chris Walker, I, I was like, 
Uh, like I that was a that was a crossroads for me because I already don't like a horror game. Like I already was like do I you don't mean, now. Do you mean I don't know if I if I read that one or if I remember it? Do you mean he he described it very note, vulgarly? Yeah. There, well, there's a note where he said it looks like somebody blank started his face or something. Okay. And it was like it just is a really cringy, like very dated term. Like I feel like I've seen it in like like somebody said that in like uh uh. You know, some not like some early two thousands like it's, like like American Pie type movie. It's weird like because the, the the writing in it was like that, and I was like, I already am uncomfortable because like it's scary, like it's stressful. There's a lot of jump scares. There's a lot of that stuff, and I was already like, okay, I'm already not on board with this because it's very unsettling. And then they added that, and I was like. That almost made me turn it off. Like just the the way he wrote the stuff. Like instead yeah. of being like, "I'm afraid for my life," it would be like, "It would be like, yeah, I don't know." It would be like yeah. you can imagine him saying like this. I think I'm seeing things, and this Chris Walker guy doesn't leave me the heck, you know, heck alone. And it's just like so cringe. Like, yeah. It's just oh, it's really bad. Cringe. But it's oh, weird. and then when he starts when he starts losing his mind, it's even worse because it's just like. It, like, it's just really poor right. I mean, it, like, again, I gotta give him... It's an indie title. Yeah. But, like... But here's the problem, is that, like, games like this, and, like, games in general... I, I won't even say indie games. Like, a lot of games suffer from this. They come up with, like, the game and the gameplay and whatever, and then they write a story to fit it. And, like, you you would have to have, like, the one of the best authors ever could maybe sound like could maybe make a story fit into whatever game you already made and then make it actually good but i even think then it would just be serviceable like it wouldn't be good bet the best games start with a story that they come up with that they are 100 percent invested in and then they build a game around it like think like psychonauts or something like that's a game where they're like here's the idea Let's build a game around it. And then they built the game around it, and it's amazing. And it plays into the story, and it's wonderful. It, this is like, they were like, okay, we want to have a horror game where it's like Clock Tower, so you don't have any fighting at all. But we, we uh, and so we wrote, we, we came up with this thing where it's like, you got the camera, and it's the night vision, and it's like in an insane asylum. And it's like, okay, cool. And they made up everything. But where did you like, go from there? They're like, okay, now let's make a story on it. And it's like, Okay, uh, what about this? And, like, it was, like, literally you imagine, like, a, a, a round table of, like, people who have never written a story in their life brainstorming, like, something like, dude, oh, that'd be cool. dude mind dude, control's dude, fun. that'd be cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And it's, like, and they're probably, you know, drinking, and they're, like, oh, yeah. And then they, then they gave, like, all the writing to some guy. They're, like, oh, write up all these notes. And they're, but, like, oh, cool. What if he's, like, but here's like, what if he's, like, a real dude who, like, makes like comments like like oh you know he uses like terms like we would use you know and it's like like if you were there how would you feel you'd be like I F that. Play this effing plays you know and yeah it's, oh cool it's and again cool. you can I've seen it before in games like like uh I'm trying to think of ones where they do first person kind of stuff but I've seen it before you know I think I think uh actually amnesia right. even though well, amnesia per Pernumera is is set a lot of it's written that those letters, and, yeah. and so it's so written in like a weird even old. Even though style. Amnesia, uh, a machine for pigs, is like a bad game. Right. The 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 way that they write and stuff, I guess, great. Oh, but here's yeah. the interesting thing about this one: a lot of the files you find, and uh, a lot of the um, like voice acting dialogue and stuff like that, is not bad. Like, like some of the files you find again, they're right, like right. they're like memo style. Right. They're oh, not the, telling the a files, story, yes. but they're they're done right. good. Yeah. And like when the father says stuff, it's not like super cringe. And right. like some of the like uh, just his notes, just Miles his notes, notes, just his right. notes are so cringe yeah. that like I got to a point like legitimately when you were saying that <laughs> this is funny when you were saying that he starts losing at a certain point. I stopped reading his notes. Yeah. I couldn't handle. It. Like I literally it's could not. not. Yeah. It's like not it was this. so. It was so, and it. it and the, a lot of them were only four or five lines long, but oh, they were yeah. like so cringe that oh, I was like, they I don't were really this. bad. And like, like and, well, and parts... a lot of times it regurgitates what just happened. So it'd be like, just saw these two naked freaks, and it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, like bring something to it. Like oh, you could absolutely. you could make it longer and be like, you know, uh, you know, but it's like it's like that's it. Uh, yeah, so, it was. Uh, yeah, that that character that was Miles. I like 
I, I was I was like, this dude's cool, and then the first note happened, and I was like, I hate this guy. Like, I immediately did not want to play as this guy. <laughs> and then you you play uh when you, when you play as Park, and I don't know if this was like from criticism, but they make him like very like uh. I kind of like stereotypical reaction because it's like he has a wife and a child. And, like, and it's oh, just every note is just like, I'm trying to get home to you, baby. Oh, uh, I, eventually, I hope my kid is eventually, okay. Eventually when he th- when he realizes, quote unquote, that he's not going to get out, he's like, I know you're like this, this. They did a good job with that, with that Lisa character, his wife. Right. Where like you could tell she's B.A., like, right. she's, like, she don't take yeah, no Yeah, because you find some memos referring to her where it's, where like, she's, like she's contacting and, and being, like, yep. where's my husband? What do you mean he's submitted? What does that mean? I need to see him. Like, she's, like, I'm finding out what's going on. And, yeah, so she seemed like a cool character, but his character was just, like, kind of lame. But it wasn't nearly as lame as Miles. He was... If, if if the original game was that character, I would have been like, okay. Like, I would have not been, like, annoyed by it, but I, it would have been passable. But, like, oh, Miles is because every other character so you awful. meet is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, um, the Doctor's pretty cool. The uh, a- 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 Eddie guy's pretty cool. They're all... Um, right. They didn't... <sighs> The, the the guy with the um the the chainsaw in the in right. in, in, in the, uh, the whistleblower saw, right was right. like not uh not as fleshed out but he no, was yeah. cool automatically yeah. just because you were like you know yeah so, he was clearly a weird cannibal guy but they didn't really explain it if we're much, looking but... at this story wise again uh, we got it we gotta view this in its in its own thing now listen was it an indie title yes but is it big enough at this point that it came out on a physical release yeah, on the PS4 right. and it's like bigger than its britches? So we got to view it, you know, right. kind of as such. But I mean, indie or not, like, if you're going to make a game, like, like either don't have a story. I would rather they just didn't have a story. Like, right. if it was literally just like, they could have made it as bare bones as possible and I would give it a much higher score because Absolutely. at least it would be like, ugh, like that bad taste, especially at the end. Oh, it's like, why, why does this happen so often where like, like, you. <laughs> Am I correct that, like, most good authors say, like, start with the end and work your way back, right? <laughs> right, right. So, like, legit, they're just like, I feel like they're in that room and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And they get well, to like, what it? do we, how do we end it? Oh. You know, and it's like, it's like, I, I do feel that in a lot of cases, it's like, start with the end, work your way back. And it's like, if your end is that, and you end in the beginning with that, it's like, dude, that was like two separate teams working together. And yeah. Like, let's put it together. So, oh, that's fine. So, literally, I'm going to take this as literal as possible. Uh-huh. If I think that the idea idea of just the insane asylum stuff is a 10 right <laughs> and the other stuff is a literal zero i'm looking at a five overall for the story because it's 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 so average right that it hurts right yeah i i gotta go with a three i mean i'm i, I mean it's just dismal like like I mean, the insane asylum stuff. I don't like. I don't. I can't even. I can understand where you're coming from, but like, I can't even give the insane asylum part a ten because, like, while the characters are cool, like, there's like no real like like story as to why like anything is I, and like I, and I, like you said, if maybe if they would have been like, it's all just crazy people being crazy, I would give it a higher score. But like, it's. It, in my head, I bump it up a little bit because even though they royally messed up the bed with with the story, they at least made it work in its own crappy world, right? right? So it's not a crappy world that doesn't make sense. At least it's a crappy world that makes sense. That you're like, oh, you know how like you, you find out a big reveal and, and you like sometimes you're like, oh, and that means you don't get it. Right. And sometimes you're like, oh, right. this is like, oh, yeah. like that's yeah. why that happened. But like, you know? like, like I guess I guess I also was like. I, I almost would have been would have given it a higher score if like you're saying the ending was bad like specifically the way the ending played out I'm not on board with because it's one of those things where it's like they spend all this time explaining how this weird nanotechnology works and then it's like oh but then you just control it without being in the pod and it's just like Get out here's here. actually a question for you and I will answer it if you want to or I won't if you don't. Do you think Outlast 2 is a continuation with this story? I have no idea. I, I hope not. Do you want me to tell you? 
I mean, yeah. I mean, if you think it'll, if you think it will ruin I mean, it or you not, you will know literally one second. Right, into the exactly. Game, which is, yes. it is not okay. Good. So does that make it? Absolutely. Does that make the the story worse or better that that is it? Because two is now I'm literally ninety five percent through the game, and if somehow they shoehorn in the first <laughs> one, then I hate Outlast two. <laughs> but like I said, like I have probably like 20, 30 minutes left in the game. So d- does that make it better or worse that it's its own unique thing and there's not like whatever? I mean it. it it does make it slightly better that like that like that's just the ending and they're not going to tell you what happens but just the fact that they created their own logic which was already founded on a bunch of fictional nonsense but then they didn't even stick with that like if you would have got like if you would have been shot and then you crawled over to a pod and got in it and then were like I don't care I'm controlling this thing fine but you didn't you you somehow why, control it, about it why, from outside of why, the thing? Why did the host not just, like... Or why did, once Billy died, why didn't it just go to, like... Is it just because he was the first body? Or why didn't it go to any of the, the much stronger uh, military oh, guys? but that's the thing. Like, it didn't... It, like, the whole thing is that... Is that it's the morphographic engine. Like, the giant thing that's like controlling his brain and making his brain even bigger than it is and then his body and then the and then like the 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 final pod or whatever like the three parts work together to create this giant engine that creates enough power to physically manifest this nanotechnology into an astral projection of this host So they're like, you need all of this to make this nanotechnology exist. And then they're like... I see what you're saying. And then they're just like, oh, but then once it exists, it can just inhabit other bodies. Ah, whatever. That's fine. We'll explain it in a file that you find later. It's like, okay, thanks. Like, I I hate, like, when it's just like that lazy kind of writing where it's just like, oh, but then it works in this case. Like, like, like either be all in or, or explain nothing. Like, explain nothing at all. Or once, or or stick to with your own explanation. Once you make it sciency or pseudosciency, you gotta like at have least an stick with whatever rules you, can you literally, have. You could literally, like I said, make it about witches, right? And that then, then what is the explanation? Magic, what, witches, dude. It's magic, magic right, dude? You don't magic. have to like explain that crap. Absolutely. It's like why does why can Harry Potter right. do magic, dude? Magic, right. it's magic. Exactly. It's like it's, like under, you, it's demons. The easiest why thing. why, yeah. why oh. demons, dude? Demons, it's like just hell demons. and stuff, like right. dude. Yeah, like, it's just a ghost, or it's just those are two ways like they could have done it. Where Absolutely. it's like, okay, cool. So anyway, we we've harped yeah. enough on the story. Dumb. Ugh, sorry. Hopefully, <laughs> the next parts that we talk about, I know one of them is gonna be is gonna be very uh, quality. So we're talking about gameplay now. The gameplay, in my opinion, is a little bit, you know. Well, let, let, let's start. It, it is it is much simpler than the story. It's less complex, which is actually a good thing in this. So, right. Outlast is one of those games where you have no abilities. Right. You're and it makes sense. You're an investigative journalist. Oh it, yeah. It, you know, Absolutely. you wouldn't be like able to do anything. Yeah. Now they purposely take, because it's a horror game. You take like two or three hits per guy. Yes. So it's not like insta kills, but. You know, you're you do, also not strong. Like right. some of these, some of these guys use like weapons on you, and it's understandable for you to right. die in two or three hits. Exactly. Some of them are just guys that punch you, and you like yeah. die in three hits, and you're yeah. like, Dude, right. come on. I mean that one, that one guy, that Chris Walker guy. It's kind of cool. The animation for your death with him is like, you know, he hits you a couple times maybe, but then he'll like pick you up, and you see that he, he's like lifted you off the ground, and he's like looking at you, and then all of a sudden like his uh, one arm pulls away. And you see your body, so like you, you know, he basically rips off your head. So you're still like obviously seeing for a split second. You, your body pulled away from you, and he like is holding it, and it's kind of dangling. It's very unsettling. But. Um. So, uh, the main thing that you do in this game clearly is is hide. Right. It's run and it's hide, and right. that's it. Tells you right away. It's like you exactly. it literally tells you you have no. Right. Before the game starts, like, you have no abilities, you run and hide. So they set up a lot of different things, like different places to hide, like a lot of lockers and a lot of right. under the beds and stuff like that. Right. And because of the way the gameplay set up... Um, and a, and a maze-like uh, yes. areas a, where they double back. A lot of the places are maze-like areas, and that's good and bad. Good in that you can, you know, get away from your guys. It's not just, like, a room where you can't hide anywhere. Bad in that once the guy goes away, you're like... 
where do I go? <laughs> and they give you very little information um, in terms of like, yeah, you can like maybe hear him walking around and stuff like that. But because oh, of the, yeah. because of the way it's it's set up, like right. a lot of times you're just walking around. The, the, you when you hear He's them, when you hear them, it's usually because you're already caught. Like right. by the time you hear them, like Chris Walker has like a chain sound a little bit. Uh, some of the other guys, you just hear their footsteps. Uh, but like once you hear them, probably it's too late. Like almost always, like it it's really like frustrating because once you lose a bad guy, you immediately have to like you almost have to immediately jump out of your hiding spot and follow them. And if you don't, then you have no idea where they are, and you and at any point they could come back out. So it really makes the like the stealth aspect of it kind of like a crap show because it's like yeah you get away and yeah you can hide but like then you have no abilities of figuring out where they are which like is understandable because like they're presenting it semi-realistically like it's not last of us where you can like see through walls yeah. based on sonar and all the stuff i get it they're trying to make it realistic but then that puts it to like it's like once it reaches a certain difficulty then I'm just kind of like, well, I'll just go and see what happens. So, like, so, so we're both on the same page. There's zero strategy We're both there. on the same page that Outlast is a very difficult game. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay. I so, mean, like, it's there's moments where you're just like, like, it, once it, you lose track of a bad guy, it's dumb. And, like Spencer said, like, the maze-like thing is, like, whatever. I would expect an investigative journalist minimally to be able to keep track of, like, where he's been. Like... If there was just like I don't understand, I don't need it to be like RE seven where you find a map in every area, but like if he would at least like draw the rooms he's been in. I, a game's done that before, and it's on the tip of my tongue. It might be I think in one of the Silent Hill games, there's an area where there is specifically no map, so he like draws it and like. I well, I know in Silent see... Hill he draws on the map. As you find out information, right, right, right. and there's Which that too. Cool but there, there's one particular, and it might be a right. game where, like, right. like literally, it's a blank sheet of paper, and he starts drawing, you know, the stuff and whatever. So that would make just a little just bit a, of sense. A very simple. It doesn't even have to show where the guys are right. on it, but like sometimes and it doesn't I would have to be, be. It doesn't have to be the, a physical drawing. It could just be like a way to access this investigative journalist's memory, because like clearly he's an investigative journalist. He probably is like. And because he's there, like, when you're in an actual building, you probably can remember the layout a bit better than when you're, like, controlling something, this first-person style. Because, like... You're there. Yeah, like, you're <laughs> you're actually is. there. And yeah. so you just feel... Like, you can feel the, the, the... Just, like... Like, in this, if you're near a window, you can see that you're near a window, but, like, when you're actually in a real place and you see a window, you automatically feel the orientation of like, that's the side of the building and here's the rest. Like you automatically feel that orientation in a way that you don't, it doesn't translate to a first person and, shooter. And there's several whatever. times in this game where when you're going through these maze like things and whatever, that they put certain places where normally in a normal game, it would be very clever, like, like squeezing between a couple bookshelves right. or whatever. Or a couple of times that really threw me off was when you would like go to a door and you'd be like, what the heck? And then you realize that above it, the windows it. open. Right. right. So sometimes that, for me, that was like yeah. the majority of the game. Anytime there like, was a, a vent, an air vent. Right. Because it was right. like up high. But because of the style of game it is, it is like super annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this yeah, what it is. Because you're being chased at all times. So it's like, unless you know exactly where the, you're going, you're, you're basically, it, 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 it ends up becoming a trial and error. Where and yes, you get and I was going to mention that. It right. is, you, you, go just, to an er, you go to an, an area and you are guaranteed to die a couple times. Absolutely. It just is what it is. Yep. And you just kind of keep going from there. Um, I will say that for whatever reason, maybe because it's newer and they figured out what was going on, I enjoyed the gameplay of Whistleblower a little bit more. I really, really did not like the gameplay for one right. and was just going through it because I was like, I gotta find out what's going on, and I wanted to do this, this review. Right, I really didn't enjoy it. But whistleblower, maybe it's because of the people in it were more it interesting. Was a, or... It was a little bit, yeah, right. The people are interesting, but it it was definitely laid out a lot more linear, linearly than uh, 
this than than the first one, where like the areas you get to in the first one are a little bit not that not that it's like a big open world, but the areas are big enough that you really can get turned around and you really have no idea where you're supposed to go. One one of the biggest annoyances for the gameplay, and I'm sure you felt the same way. Get to a new new area. Oh, I need to turn the power on, so I need to go to the generator. Uh, do three valves yeah, two in three, or three separate places all, over and over again. Yeah, and it absolutely. was very, like, the first time that you did it, you're in a basement and you need to turn on a generator or, or turn on the right. water or something, right. and you have to find two valves. Yes. And that was cool because it's like, oh, damn. You know, right. Whatever. And then but as then, soon as you do the second valve, then the thing shows up that's going to chase you. And it's like, because there were, there were areas where it would be a while until something was chasing you. So you did have time to explore a bit. Yeah. But then once you triggered it, it's like, okay, well, I, I, w- now I hope I... Now I can't I, do anything. Right. Now I can't explore at all. I just got to run and try and, to do something. And if they did that once in a while, it's fine. But literally every area was yeah. Yeah. to do X... Yeah. To, to, to do X, you need to do Y. But to do Y, you need to do 3Z. Right, yeah. And yeah. that's just... That, it, every time, it was yeah. like... You three levers, A, B, or, and C, or three. And then, um, I forget yeah. if it was whistleblower or one, but my least favorite part of the whole game, gameplay wise, was where you the have to fuses? get those three fuses. That's oh, whistleblower. God. Seriously, like that dead not, serious. Because you're was, being chased by two things and, at that point. And 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 you, there is no quick saves that I remember in that part. No. You have to get all three. Yes. So like there was times I had two and I was putting the third in and I died and I was well, like, well, I lucked out two. because th- as soon as you put the third one in, they do quick save. So, so like I lucked out instantly. because I no I died a couple times, but then I got that third one in, and the guy was right behind me. And as soon as I got it in, it started doing whatever it was supposed to do. Oh, you had to like uh, hit a button, and it opened the the dumb waiter yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I did that, the guy was already hitting me. And as soon as the do- the door opened, he hit me the third time, and I died. And then when the auto save happened, <laughs> I just appeared there and the guys were gone and and the fuses were in and i was like thank god because if i that would have probably made me turn off the game because it was like i got that close and it was like come on like early on in the game where you're doing a lot of explore like okay they 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 (laughs) they really they really they started to get better in whistleblower and in my opinion uh they got they really figured it out in outlast 2 but but especially with outlast 1 Part of why people like horror games is, like, the atmosphere and the times where you're not constantly dying. Right. And I felt like there were not enough moments where you're, like, just exploring and seeing weird stuff and whatever. It was just, like, over and over again, it was, like, oh, big area with enemy, big area with enemy, right. big area with enemy. Like, over and over again. And it's, right. like, it was, again, just, like, too much. And it's, like, uh, I need, oh, now I need to open this door. Oh, I need to find the three keys. Yeah. Well, here's an enemy. It's, like, yeah. over and over again where, again, just, yeah. like, the story, it was, like, what a cool idea done very like sloppily and whatever now we actually (laughs) going through all that we actually did not mention the main thing of the game which is the the, almost the entire game is in complete darkness right we mentioned the camera before clearly that's a huge camera you need because of the notes but that's only for story the main thing about the camera is that it's night vision it has night vision and provides it and and the guy the the things that are chasing you generally can't see in the dark you have to be pretty close to them for them to see you when it's dark yes um although i will say that there was the a, ai like, was not it was kind of lame where like they can't see you but then if you happen to walk within like whatever five feet of them even if they're facing away from you they suddenly just see you and start chasing you yeah. like the, the that some of the ai was kind of lame in that regard where it was like there wasn't like they 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 tried to present it where it was like the bad guys can't see in the dark and you can because of your camera so you have that advantage but then it's like sometimes you get close to them and and you're crouching and they're not looking at you, and they just chase you. Yeah. And you're like, that's such yeah. BS. Like, I should be able to walk, like, right by them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, you know, you want to feel like uh, like it's like the end of uh, Silent of the Lambs or whatever. Silence of the Lambs, where it's like, she's, like, in that dark room, and, and what's-his-name has the night vision goggles. And, like, he sees her, you know, and, and you see her react to him, like, touching her hair. And she, like, she has no idea he's right there, you know? And, like, that's what I wanted out of this game because it was, like, 
You know, like, if I could walk right behind one of the big dudes, as long as he wasn't, like, looking in my That's general cool. direction, that would have been cool. But, but it, it was just, like, it was just, like, a trigger hitbox. It doesn't, it doesn't work It just way. felt yeah. like there was an aura, and you just, like, as soon as you break it, they chase you, and it's like, okay. Yeah. So, that, that felt a little lame. But uh, the problem is, like, it, you know, whatever. Maybe, like, it's like, oh, you're not a hardcore gamer, or blah, 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 whatever you want to say. But, like, in my mind... If you're going to present a world where, like, it's that hard in terms of you don't have any way of... Uh, well, you're, you're outnumbered a million to one. Right. You have no way to fight back. Even So even in Clock Tower, you have the ability... You're like a little... You're like a teenage girl can't do anything. You have the ability to at least pick up, like, a vase and throw it on Scissor Man. He doesn't die. No. But, like... He would have, you know, right. and, but and like another There's big thing. No about, way to stop. Another him. big thing about that game is you can hide from Scissor Man, where he disappears for a while. Right. And you have time to mess around, right. and then they give you the audio clues when he's coming back. This is like you you get them to leave, and they're like maybe standing right outside the door again. Oh, that was the worst. I understand the, the the scariness and whatever, but it's like the odds are so unbelievably stacked against you. Like a million guys want to get you all the time. You right. can't you can't fight at all. You can't run at all. You can't even like use anything. So it's like it at least make it more like right at like least they can't see in the dark like you know, or like yeah either they can't see in the dark or give them way more audio clues yeah cuz one thing that happened to me a couple of times is i would be getting chased uh, or 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 i or i realize there's a guy in the area so i find a locker i hide in it you only get a little slit to look out of yep. And then basically all I can do is wait and hope that he walks by yep. because then I know where he is. You can't hear it. You don't have very – some of the guys, some of the guys have like constant audio cues and that they're like constantly talking. But even talking. then you have to be pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Like in, the, in, the, in terms of like the Chris Walker guy, even though he's massive, like – you, you don't hear those chains until you're, like, right near yeah. them. Yeah. And so, like, I would go into a locker, and I'm in the locker, and I can't do anything. And, and then all of a sudden, you start hearing Miles breathing heavily. And I'm like, okay, like, whatever game. Like, the game, as soon as you, like, especially if you turn off the night vision for a second, it'll be like... <sighs> By the way. Like, that kind of the- whatever. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But, like, I sat in the locker for, like... One time I sat in the locker, I put the controller down just because I was like, F it, I'm not doing this part until I see the guy. Because I'm like, I can't tell where he is, and I don't want to walk out and immediately get killed. So I'm just like, I put the controller down, and I was like playing on my phone, waiting for them to walk by. They never did. I walk out, I turn the corner, he's there. And I'm like, I hate everything. And I was like, it, it got to the point where you literally had to like hide and immediately Get out of hiding so that you could follow them, but make sure you don't get too close to them. And it's just like, it was like, if that's the gameplay, okay, maybe like I'm not good enough at games to get it. I mean, but like that's just I, like lazy. I've it just played, seems lazy. I've played all of the Penumbras and all of the Amnesias, right. which by the way I love, and they're very similar games. I really like. Uh, I forget which Penumbra you're in, Alaska. Or wherever you are, the cold place and whatever. Right. It's like phenomenal. And, oh, Amnu- yeah. and and Amnesia, the Dark Descent is phenomenal. I love those games. And they, they fill you with unease and they whatever, but like they're really, really good. Right. It this was not good gameplay wise. Also oh. the, uh, what I was gonna mention before is like the they're like the AI is like too smart. Yes. Like where like you'll run into a room and there might be like a couple places to hide or like maybe three lockers and like, you know, Sometimes games throw you a bone, like like Clock Tower. Uh, you know, sometimes he won't even like look. He'll just be like uh, and leave. Like a lot of times, they would just come in, beeline straight for the locker and pull you out. And you're like, seriously, like right? They, it, they don't even a- give you the benefit of like having. Like I understand, like it, and it makes sense. You know, there's some times where they'll have like five lockers and they'll just like open up everyone and just be like smash. I don't care. Like I'm just a bad guy. I just want right. to smash everything. But they'll just walk straight to the middle one yep. or the fourth one that you're in and just yep. be like run. And it's like and certain enemies tell. certain enemies always find you under a bed. Like if if they're if the enemy like the enemy that chases you with a bat, I think no matter where if you hide under a bed, he will always check under every bed. And it's like but if you're hiding in a locker, you can watch him walk in, he won't look under a bed. But it's like the, the AI only looks under the bed when you're <laughs> under the bed, and I'm like, uh, like it just the very last yeah. the very last thing. This is very important to mention is that night. Uh, 
the camera can be on at all times right. with no consequences. Even though it's but, like full HD video, but, which I'm but, like, BS, And I whatever. understand, I understand <laughs> what it is, but, but when the night vision is on, it drains batteries. There is right. one item you can pick up in the game, and it's batteries. Just look, They look like double-A batteries. Right. And, um, and you're, you're you can hold ten at a time, on, on, which I never really... I never even got ten, and I don't even think I needed ten. Like, I didn't <laughs> on, need that on much, normal, but. the batteries run out really fast. They do. Yeah, By the way, absolutely. There's, there's like almost all of this game is in complete darkness. Yeah. Especially there's sometimes where you're outside and you're like, oh, it's the, a big open area, right? And you're like, and you're like, well, okay, well maybe like I go this way, and then it's like by the time you go there, you're right, and you can't walk around. It's not like right. I'm, I have this off because I'm scared. Right. It's like I have this on because literally otherwise I can't see anything. Right. Right. The, one, the area thing. outside that was the worst was when you would put on either the night vision or regular. It was like foggy. So like oh, yeah. even though the night vision was on, you could still only see like five feet in front of you. And I'm like, huh. I mean, luckily I, I'm pretty sure in that area you weren't being chased like maybe once. But like you were just mostly exploring. But it made the exploring such a chore because you were like, that one, there was one area where there was like a big fountain and you had to go like a few different ways around the fountain. And basically like I could not for the life of me, like I got down the one edge and I found like a little shack and there was like a key hanging in the I shack. I think I know exactly the place you're talking and about. And then I basically yeah. had to find where to use this key. And I was just like walking around for like ever. And I'm like, this, I wish there was a guy chasing me at this point because this is boring. Like, I'm walking around and around and I have no idea. And, and a lot of times the places that you would end up going in are like very small um, holes and fences where yeah. they're like very small cutouts and you're like, yeah. oh, I needed to crawl down there and find, and you're like, Dude. but the, Yeah, the whole thing was I walked around and around and around and finally I found this like mesh door that I needed to unlock and it was like, well, good Lord, like, jeez, like I finally found it. But what was happening was like, like, I just kept seeing the same thing, and I thought it was, like, the shack. And it just was just, like, a poor level design or whatever. I mean, if you're going to give the characters so little to work with, which is only a camera that can't see really well, right. you can't make a big open area. Right. Because the people are just going to, like, get lost. And Absolutely. It's like, and it's, like, literally... Unless you make a, a map. Make a map. Like, make a mental map everywhere you've been. Yeah. And then I can access it and your, be like, okay. Your actual eyes, even in almost complete darkness, will, like... Um, adjust enough that right. you get to the point where you can like kind of see in the dark. Right. Dude, it is what it is. Like even what just the moon out there will like you'll be able to like oh, yeah. you won't be like I'm right. completely blind. But guess what? You're completely blind in this game oh, if you don't yeah. have the night vision oh, on these yeah. things. And it's like no so dude I, like I could go outside right now it's dark outside and eventually you'd be like yeah I can kind of see. Yeah. Like you're not going to be like it's clear as day but you right. can see enough to be like oh is that a shack over there? Yeah. So um yeah it, I, it was just I, I was and, just and this very is This is on normal. Oh, God. There were, I think, three, at least two. I don't if remember. Not, I don't there remember might have ever, been three above normal. I don't ever remember having more than three or four batteries because one of the things I read in one of the one of, uh, there was one time I was just so stuck that I just literally had right. the fact. And one of the things that it said oh, was yeah. that batteries, batteries are, are random. random. So it's like cool. You can't even look. You can't even like, check oh, a guy. You know, it's right. like, um, uh, I do want to mention this real quick. Uh, last thing for gameplay, and then we're done with the majority of this is there were times where I literally died on purpose because I oh, had yeah. no batteries. Yeah. And whenever you come back, they give you a full battery. So I'd right. be like, Pfft. I'd yeah. be like, well, so like when you have a battery, when you don't have batteries, it's literally a death sentence because you right. can't even be like, well, now the game's like super scary and I can't do anything. It's like, no, you literally cannot right. see. The game's like, impossible. It's like, impo it's like right. literally impossible. Exactly. Like you can't do anything. Like you literally, well, there's I would, even just, a do, part where I would you... just do restart or whatever. Right. Well, there's a part where, I mean, like specifically they, they say it in the game even, you lose your camera at one point near the end of the game and it's like, you, it, I, I, it might have been through, yeah, Whistleblower. I think it was Whistleblower. And, and it says, you cannot continue until you find your camera. Like, they even tell you. Like, it's like, I thought you would lose the camera, and I thought that maybe, like, the last, how, because it was near the end of the game, and I just assumed maybe that last bit of game was, like, without camera. You know what I mean? Like, you just tried to get through, and, like, they made the areas not as dark. But it was like, nope, can't continue on without your camera. Go back and get it. And you're like, well, if it's so important, then, like, why why would they make the batteries, like, that 
ridiculous. Where and like, they're small, and they don't. Oh, yeah. They they uh they they, they shine glint. a little, right? But and it's they like, they glint like the files and batteries do glint even with the camera off and the darkness. You will see it, it's still but it's still see. such a glint. Like it's tiny. You're yeah. not gonna see that. Yeah, I am. I I guarantee that unless someone is familiar with the game, they would have times like us where they would just literally restart yeah. from a checkpoint so they right. could have a battery. So but I remember I'm, I found one part where you can die. And there were two batteries, and where it auto saved you, both batteries would keep respawning. So I literally, that was the only time I got up to 10. Because okay. I happened to die. Um, there was a part where you accidentally could fall down an elevator shaft, right? And I did. And then I found out the battery spawned. So I just kept jumping down this elevator shaft until I got 10 batteries. And then I was like, set for the game. I'm like, dang. So yeah, but, we, yeah. we harped on this long enough yeah, for, right. for the gameplay. It's it's bad for even... Now, I mentioned this before. It's bad. Horror games are not meant to be controlled well. They're right. not meant to have exactly. you like be in control of the situation. Absolutely. And that's understandable. Clock Tower doesn't have great control, right. but it has good gameplay. Same with Silent Hill and stuff. This, it's just bad. Three out of ten. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that I liked the night vision in the sense that it did make the like the fact that the uh the some of the areas probably like the spookiness went up because of like viewing it through a uh, uh, that um night vision style uh right. made it scarier so i i, I want to give it a few extra points for that just cuz that was like I don't know, even if that's innovative, but it's the first time I played it. Uh, so I'm going to give it a four on that. Uh, but, uh, like, just the idea that every area just became trial and error. Proce it was like a procedure. Again, like again. You just walk, like, horror towards games, the end. Right. Horror games shouldn't be, shouldn't be, like, fun fun. Right. But it shouldn't be also a chore. It should right. be, like... Again, a great a great horror game has like moments of like just craziness. Silent Hill one, a great example. So like you you go through the world and you find a place and you go through it and it's like they do such a good job of this. It's like it's bad. Like you go in there and you're like, man, everything's messed up. And you eventually get to a point where it becomes dark Silent Hill right. and everything is the worst. Everything right. is literal hell. Yeah. But then you beat the boss or whatever and there's calmness for a little. Yes. And you can collect yourself. There's right. like literally no moments of that yeah, in this game. No. And then, like horror games don't have to constantly be like you, uh, jump scares all the time. You're scared right. all the time. It's like you can have like Silent Hill has moments. A great moment after you beat the first boss, you just wake up in the in the school basement and. There's no music. Everything's chill. It's not right. scary. You, right. you walk out and there's no enemies. You know, it'd be like, imagine being the first boss and it's like, you wake up and it's like, it's like, oh, there's enemies outside. Yeah. Now you're caught again. You know, it's like, oh yeah. God, just. Well, because like the, and I will say that even the, the, the few, like you said, there were few, the few moments where there is a lull was I was annoyed because I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to be doing. It wasn't like it was like a lull because there was just nobody around. It was because I was in an area and I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? And I'm just walking around in a circle for like five, ten minutes just being like, what do I do? And then like, finally I find it and then immediately there's a bad guy again. And it's like, well, I hope you enjoyed that time when you were just walking around in a circle with no enemies. Um, so yeah. moving on to sound... Let's start with the music, which is usually in games we do recently the weakest part. I, I can't think of anything special to say about now, the music. The only, the only good part about the music, I, I mean, it wasn't good. I don't remember it, but its existence uh, helped you realize when the things were chasing you. Yeah, like it was Versus, around, like... Because sometimes, sometimes they were, like you said, some enemies talk. Like Eddie talks the whole time. Like he's like... What a, where's my bride? I'm coming to find you. And then he says something when he chases you, but it's not quite clear that he's, like, going to chase you. Like, I think he says, you crazy bee. But, like, he could have just been saying that aloud. But the music starts, and you're like, okay, he saw me. Yeah. Like, let's go. Uh, and whatever. Oh, and by the way, the other thing I hate is that not only do, do guys chase you when you get... 
within some dumb hitbox or something. But when you get to certain part, like you get to a certain physical location in the level, like they night. automatically yeah. start chasing you because it's a chase part. And that was always annoying because sometimes you would like do a really good job of hiding and they would be like really far away. And then you would walk down a hall and as soon as you walk past a door, it's like, there you are. And it's like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Like, God, like, yeah. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, that, the sound, the, the music, that was its only purpose, was yeah. that you now, knew when they were chasing The you. other sound stuff is pretty cool. I, this is so minor, right. but the, the noise when you turn on the night vision is pretty cool. Yeah. Like, the boo, like, I yeah. like that. And that and, is, a, that is a sound that, that, like, it's, it reminds me of back in the day when we used to have, like, uh, cameras with with film in them, but like when you would turn on the flash, it would make that yep. like powering up sound, yep. and that's what it reminded me of a lot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but one thing I hated was when you look at your notes and come back from your notes, or look at a file and come back from your file. There was this very ominous, like this like sat like oh, horn, yeah. and like it made me go like, wait, is some? Oh, right, it's that sound. Like too many times, and I was just like, I get. That you're trying to be unsettling because it's a horror movie, the horror game. But there's already so much that's unsettling. You don't need to add on like frivolous sounds that don't mean anything. Yeah. Like that was like annoying. Like I get that you're trying to set an atmosphere, but like it was to the point where it was like you're just putting that in to make me like almost like a sound jump scare where it's like this sound Ugh. doesn't like mean nothing. anything. Nobody's coming. Blah blah blah. But brr! like uh, okay, great. Other than that I, I do feel like the general sound effects for setting the mood was pretty good it wasn't outstanding but it was pretty good you know like that everything was where it should have been if that makes sense like the right. fire sound sounded like fire and the rain sound sounded like rain and it was like yeah. you know they had some when you were outside it had some pretty good kind of like ambience kind of stuff so nothing great nothing bad there i do like the voice acting, besides the main character, right? Well, I think he, I, and he doesn't talk, so l luckily, oh, does he? Does he not talk at all? Oh, I don't think so. Maybe I think it's doesn't. all notes. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So, so the voice acting is all the people you're yep, meeting, yep. And, and they're I, all I mean, pretty so, good. Some of them are, are like right. a little forgettable, but then some of them, like the doctor, was great, right? And the the, 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 the guy was great. Is, the, the priest, priest the is priest great. was pretty good. Um, so they did they they did a good job on on that at least. So yeah, sound. It's it's about average. So everything everything besides the voice acting is is literally pure average for right, me. It's exactly right. what you expect. Yeah. But the voice acting is pretty good. So eh, six and a half, six and a half overall. Yeah, I can give it a six on that because because I did like Eddie's character. It was like obviously like his strong, like I mean right. I, it was awful and upsetting and I wanted to die, but like. That's what he was trying to do, and so they succeeded in that. Yeah. Like, I was terrified, so you win. But, yeah. like, yeah, it wasn't like, oh, this guy's awesome, like, you know, but it was what it was supposed to do. So, so moving over to graphics and atmosphere, um, let's start with graphics. I always like to start with the worst point and move from there. They're what you can yeah, expect. Right. I, I mean, mean it's, it's an indie title from yep. 2013. It is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, I'm not expecting, you know... Last of Us, you know, it is what it is. The yeah. the 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 the, pe the um, people look cool. Uh, so, some of the yep. character design are really great. I really liked how the twins looked. Yeah, really. Even right. though they didn't have too much that was like right. Like the doctor, the... the doctor had a lot of stuff that was physically crazy about right. it, and so did uh, the Chris, the the big the big right. guy. But like the twins, the just twins just looked just unsettling like, because. They they were they like, look like children's faces, yeah, they, but on like they were and they were their players. bodies their but their bodies too the way that even though they were big and and muscular they reminded me of, of those uh, the the weird children in Silent Hill one because yeah. they were just like their bodies were just like elongate like their arms were a little bit too long yeah. or something and they like really unsettling like I, I I I like that a lot for in, sure in general I think it's safe to say that graphics and atmosphere is where the game does it best right because when you're not constantly getting chased or right. running out of batteries right. or all that right. other garbage right. you like come into a room and they'll be like it'll be cool like one of the really cool things they said for the atmosphere is you walk into a room kind of early on and there's like six guys sitting there yeah and they're all just watching TV yeah like I freaked TV, out the, I was like, ah! the TV's just static yeah so, right. you know, it's, like, it's cool in that, like, it's just, 
and you can stand in there and look oh, at them, and they and they like have slight animations. The one guy scratches his face and just keeps staring blankly at this. Sometimes the guys, TV. sometimes the guys you meet are like wholly uninterested in you. I think we mentioned that before. Right. So they'll just be like looking at you Doing and they'll whatever. kind of follow you. The around. one guy is just like slamming his head into a wall over and over, and like walking and slamming his head somewhere else, and you can see like a blood spot. Where he's just clearly been doing this for a long time, and they, they sometimes they tell sometimes they tell you a story. Sometimes they're like, "You can't go in there because they said he was there," and then like, and then they'll tell you like a little story and like, and so you're like, "Okay, like I, I'm on board with that." Like, sometimes you walk into I, I really uh, like the thing about horror that is so hard for like pretty much anything to do is you gotta like uh, what's the word I'm looking for you can't be too obvious about it it's all in the in the su- subtleness yeah the subtlety, so like yeah. sometimes you walk into a, like some of the places I like best is like you walk into a place and like clear carnage has happened right, right? right. but like it's not obvious how or when or right. why right. but like there's body parts everywhere yep. and you know that's that's the subtlety that a lot of horror stuff it makes great so like you know it's cool when you when you meet the the the, the chef guy and you find all the the body parts and then you like see a force scene where he's like cutting people and he's like yeah essentially saying well, i like to eat people and right. it's like okay that's cool to see but like just going into a place a little on the and, nose. And, and, yeah. and 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 seeing the right. stuff without an explanation you're like Oh, you know, like yeah. that's I, I like better. So For it did sure. a really good job of some of the parts where you just walk in and you're like, what happened here? And you like right. got to put it together. Like again, some of the scariest stuff in this stuff is the stuff you don't see. Right. You don't have to be spoon fed this. And again, right. they, they answer exactly. a lot of questions you don't you don't need to there now. Exactly. Gr- so the graphics in general are pretty much what expected. Atmosphere in general is besides the. Uh, what you call it at the end, the the underground laboratory, which right. I guess they do it, for what yeah, it is. It, it looks for good. what it is. Yeah. It's set up like a Half Life type type. Uh, Absolutely, whatever. The atmosphere is great. It really sets it up good. I yeah, really that's had obviously it. where this game shines, and it's probably the only reason that people continue to play it because the atmosphere you you feel terrified. Like it's yep. a terrifying atmosphere, and the way it's set up with like how you see things. And it being dark and the night vision and everything going together, like they, they do knock it out of the park specifically on that atmosphere. Yes, but I'll say that like when you go along with this, the when towards like later in the game where you get to where you just start getting to the same procedure of like walking into an area and just letting yourself get killed like multiple times till you figure out what you're supposed to do, like you know you start to like. To, you know, not really pay attention to what you're looking at because you're just like, ah, whatever. I just, just want to get done, kind of. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, so be, the the atmosphere is great, but you don't get to experience it because the gameplay and story is so bad that you don't want to really, you don't care. You're just like, get, yeah. just get it over with. I don't care. Still, I think overall, I do think that they hit it out of the park with this one. I, yes. Honestly, I'm probably looking like an eight on that. I, I think they did a really good job. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a seven on the on that just because, I mean, like the the. Uh, some of the graphics, like, you know, obviously, it, like you said, it's an indie game, but I got to give it a few ducks because it didn't look pristine or awesome or whatever. Right. You could tell they had limitations, yeah. but but the atmosphere was excellent. All right, to finish up here real quick, we have, uh, once we get to this point, it's pretty much all done. We have Fun Factor. Again, <laughs> very important to note right. that it's I don't game. expect I don't expect to have fun in horror games. Right. But, but you expect to have that experience this, that you want to This have. was a level where it was just more... Fr- it was scary, yes, but it was more right. frustration than anything. Right. It was just frustrating the whole time. Everything right. about it was frustrating. Well, the, the scary moment- parts were what I expected or, you know, I don't necessarily want, but I can appreciate... So the moments that were... When it was on, when it was working, I was like, okay, this is the kind of scary that I'm expecting. But like you said, once that frustration comes in, scary and atmosphere goes out the window. You just don't yeah. care anymore. You're yeah. like, I hate this. I'm and annoyed it's, by it's it. tough. It's 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 of all genres, it's probably the toughest to get exactly right. Yeah. Like part of being yeah, part of horror games is you don't want to have fun. You want to feel um, you want to feel emotions that if you felt in real life and you weren't controlling it would be right. the worst. Oh, absolutely. Like, if you were, like, ever that scared, it would be, like, terrible, oh, right? absolutely. But, like, it's a controlled environment. You want to kind of set yourself up for right. it is you what know, it is. And you know you can turn it off at any time. So it's just, like, a way to experience these, like, really stressful moments without actually having to experience them. Right. 
And then, and that in itself is frustrating sometimes, but there's a level, there's a fine line, right. and this game far surpasses it in terms of just being, <laughs> yeah, you know, they do Silent not, Hill, they when, when, when I would play that, you know, even now, you know, once in a while, you just gotta put the controller down. Right, It right. just is what it is, but Absolutely. it's like, you know you're drawn back to it, you're like, ugh, F this. Right. You know, Silent, Silent Hill 4, for all of its problems, is still one of my favorite horror games, because it's just so dang scary, and you're right. just like, F this game, F this game, F this <laughs> right, game, you put right. it down, but then you know what, you turn on the PS2 again. You know what no, I mean? And like right, I'll finish it. But yeah, that that this is like very really tried my patience because just because it was like uh, like just so I mean, the, annoying. The, the only two reasons I even finished this game was to do this podcast, talk about it and whatever, and that I knew that two was another Supposedly one good. Yeah, or maybe. I, I mean, I didn't I didn't know anything about it beforehand. All I ever heard was how Atlas One was like so awesome. It has like a literal nine point five out of ten on Steam. Yeah, what? And, like, I, like I I feel like I'm on a different level from the people. Like like not not in that I'm better or worse or whatever. But like I'm on a different wavelength yeah. than like the people that are doing this. That like that's when they you know see, you're getting older. <laughs> they see like it's like jump scares and they're like I'm scared and it's like yeah, yeah but like. Isn't there but more? Is there anything else? Like yeah. anything at all? So I did I did I give it a did I give it a score for fun factor? I don't think I did. No, I, I had no fun. Um, it was it <laughs> wasn't like like okay. What did it, I don't think I have Resident Evil's written down. I don't have Resident Evil Six written down. But whatever I gave Resident Evil Six, I hope this is on the same thing because I had no fun. It wasn't a zero in that it was unplayable. I did finish it. But it wasn't average at all. I'm looking at a three. I mean, I had I had no fun. It yeah, was, it was I, no I'm fun. going. With you know, the the only reason I give it more than a one or two is some of the scenes with uh, Eddie and stuff like that was like verging on fun. It was like ruined right. by a lot of stuff, but it was verging on fun. So it had fun moments. Right. It's like uh, yeah. it's like you have like like you make cookies and you burn twenty three of the twenty four, but you got a cookie. <laughs> and you got like one cookie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can see that. I, I am giving, definitely giving this a one, uh, just because I, like I, I I don't want to give it a zero because like you said we finished it or whatever. But like, yeah, it was that, fun. that 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 just... first that the, like I, like I thought well if it's like I, again I don't like I don't love horror games, you know like Spencer. So I'm coming at it from a different angle where it's like I don't generally seek this kind of thing out, but I can definitely experience it and and judge it for what it is like resident evil 7 very very scary and very survival horror but i had a great time with it because it's a well-made game this like i was giving it the benefit of the doubt i was like okay just let it be scary whatever and then when that bad writing came in that destroyed me because that's the only ever that's the only thing i ever cling to with this stuff you know what i mean is like with when it comes to fun factors like well i'm not I'm not into this, like, style of whatever. So let me see what kind of story we got. And that's why I like Resident Evil 7. I was like, I love this. Because I really like the story a lot. And the atmosphere and all this other stuff. I loved it. This, the story, like, made me so Oh, angry. my gosh. I've played through so I many. so I've, annoyed. I've played through so many bad horror games because of the story. Yeah. Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, is, like, truly terrible in that it has no gameplay. Right. But I still went through it because, like... The story was pretty cool. Yeah. So absolutely, I've done. Oh, I mean, yeah. it so, just anyway, no, one on there. fun factor for me. So last one is replayability. Um, so as uh, th this one, we always uh, this one we have to give with a um, grain of salt when it comes to it. So like a ten is like again we you pick it up you, year it, after year. Yeah, you know, or whatever. like you instantly start it again or whatever. A five is like it's like. I would replay it. I mean, I don't want to, but, like, it wouldn't cause me physical pain. And a zero, which I guess is physically possible, would be, like, this is absolutely causing me pain. I would have no fun. I'm literally looking at a one. Like, thinking yeah. about playing this game is, like... And, again, it's not because it's scary. Thinking about this game because it's just, like, it's... It, it's, it even seems longer than it is. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not even a long game. But, no. like, it just seems ugh, so long. I, I don't want to play it. I have no interest in playing it yeah. at all. And, in fact, not only do I have no interest, but, like, it pains me to think about doing so. I'm curious why you're not giving it a zero, then. What's that? You're giving it a one, though. Uh, so what bumps it up from a zero? Because I'm, I'm looking at a zero. So I'm curious what bumps it up to a one for you. I mean, there has to be a game out there... That's... Oh, so you're doing the preserving it. Huh? You're doing the preserve a zero for a game that could be worse. Is that the idea? There, like, has, to be, there has to be a game out there that would be like 
a more jumbled piece of garbage. I mean, there has to be. Like, at least this oh, game yeah. has, like... Okay, <laughs> I'll explain my reasoning for a one. I would play the first 15 minutes okay. of, of the beginning because I it's see. actually... Like, that I would replay and I would go, look at that. Right. And then I would stop. All right. It's not okay. like it starts yeah. as the worst thing of all time. I can see that. And, okay. And I would... Here's one other reason I would give it a one. If someone was, like, over and they were like, hey, do you have that Outlast game? Can I see it? I would start up for like a second and to show, show them, them and be how like, bad it "Look, is or whatever. It, yeah, whatever." Like okay. this jump scares, and if they take it as, Fair enough. "Dude, scaring scary equals good," I'd be like, "Yeah, cool." Like yeah. I wouldn't be you like, watch I wouldn't be like, play. "I'm not booting that up." You know yeah. what I mean? I've, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. So zero for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I think that's, but I can see what you're saying. I think I, that I, might I'm, I think that might have been like legit the first zero because at least like a Resident Evil is like Resident Evil. Excuse me. Um. Six, six right. is like at least like it would cause you pain, but if I was like, hey, you know what, you you know you want to go well, for like, that DLC, you'd be like, <laughs> fine, right, right. You know. Well, because again, in that regard, like I can play it, and we can make like like mystery science theater it where we're making fun of it the whole time. This one, like this, this one, you can't I, make fun of. I wouldn't even want to do that. Like I don't care at all. I was just so annoyed by everything that was yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, and it's. And it's, it's funny, because I never played this before, so going in, I was, like, thinking that what might happen is I might give it, like, really high scores and be like, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And you would be like, I hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. Hate it. <laughs> so that's kind of what I was going for originally, yeah. but <laughs> it ended so up, I mean, it just, bad. I just, I just cannot see how it gets so positive, like, reviews. Ever. I, I feel, I, like, I feel again, like the people we who are reviewing it, it didn't play it. Like, but I here's the like, thing, we did give it a high on atmosphere, and if that's the only metric you're using... If but you game just has gameplay, right? But like, <laughs> if, if you are just if if the game just exists for you to walk around a room and get scared by something, then this game is is fine. It's great. Yes. It's th if that's it, and you don't give any care to anything just watch, else, just watch a bad horror movie, right? Then. Like at that point, yeah, you're just do that. But like, yeah, for sure, it's definitely like. What is? Uh, I mean, and it has it has very universal reviews. Like, look at like positive reviews. Yeah, like that's crazy, very, and like I just don't. Well, clearly, it had to be good enough to make a sequel. Well, and in my mind, with the with what I feel about this, I would never even imagine a DLC, let alone a sequel. Like in my mind, I'm like, that's insanity. Like who, like what development team made this, and then and then people like made them feel like they should keep Again, working on it. Again, it's just one of those weird things where it just catches for whatever reason. Right. And in another world, it just ends up being that indie title that no one, no yeah, one picked exactly. up kind of thing. I um, mean, to, to, when you talk about, like, Penumbra, like, nobody played Penumbra. Like, I would tell that to people and they'd be like, what? I've never even heard of that. Right. Like, that, that's not but a... Outlast is the... Right. The, 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 the apple of it. Yeah, it's like it's, which it, is it crazy. It is the horror game. Like, Absolutely. it's like, it is what it is. It's so weird. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it, like, lends itself to, like, non-normal video game players, which, again, is, like, very surprising because of how difficult it is. Like, oh, I don't yeah. know... Like, like, you're, like, I'm pretty decent at video games, and, like, it's, I like... I are playing it on normal. It, like, I, I, I understand if it was super hard on, like, Nightmare or whatever the hell the highest But normal. it's normal. It's normal. It was normal. So, like, I, geez. I truly do not get it. So, um, overall, our scores came up to... I was sitting at a 4.42. You were at a 3.5. The only thing that saved this game was the excellent atmosphere, atmosphere for it. Yeah. I mean... You know, it it, 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 it kind of is what it is on that. I think it's probably our second lowest score overall. Yeah. Uh, with Resident, I, Evil, the, Resident Evil 6. Between the atmosphere, the and we did give okay to the sound yeah. because the voice acting wasn't I, horrible. I just. Because that, that Eddie character I, was I don't, pretty good. I don't feel like I'm like. When it comes to games in general, I feel I'm actually, especially considering a lot of my friends and the people who work at CIB, I feel like I'm much more forgiving than your average hardcore, like, gamer. Like I like like I liked Darksiders too. I gave it almost an eight, and Darksiders two has like a lot of problems. Right. I liked Revelation, Resident Evil Revelations two, and Revelations two has a lot of problems. But I was like, eh, I had a good time. Right. So like, I I, I feel like I don't want to. I don't feel like I'm that guy that's like I just hate everything that's not uh, you know G O T Y Last of Us kind right. of thing. You know, right. it's like I like a lot of average games. Absolutely. And this one is like just it just I, yeah I don't get it ruins I don't get. it ruins everything for that. It and, definitely is weird because dude and literally knowing knowing I, now that you're what you're saying about it being like this universe. Dude, when I love, said I was I'm playing like, Outlast, wow. like I just said it casually to a couple friends, like both of them were I, two or three people were like. 
dude, you gotta let me know what you think about it. So it's that game. Do you know what game that is? For, that's like Last of Us. Yeah. If someone right. picks up Last of Us, I'm like, Absolutely. you gotta let me know what you think. Because right. it's like, not perfect by any means, but man, what a great experience. Absolutely. You know? So yep. like, when someone's like, I'm playing Last of Us for the first time, I'm like, gotta right. let me know what I you think, hear, man. Let's I wanna hear talk what you about say. it. Yeah. So like, that's that game for these people. And it's like, wow. I feel like I'm like, it's like one of those where, you know, like when you're like sitting watching a movie and they're like, and they're like, this part's coming up. Right, and you're right. Like, or, like, or like when somebody's playing a song for you and they're like, listen to this part. And then they're like, ah, and you're like, this sounds but, like. But I also nothing. like. I also. I, I have to say that like. It, I don't. None of my. None of, none of my like review comes because of that. Like like I've liked games that everyone hates and I've hated games that everyone loves. It has nothing to do right. with it for this. It's just like I don't know how it became that thing. And I, I like. I truly feel like a lot of people that reviewed this played it for a little and was like, dude, it was scary, right. man. Like you said, 10 if, you, out of 10, if you, know? you played the first 15 minutes, then I, I maybe how, you would have... I don't know how anyone you, could like, have, like, right. like, like, got to the end with, like, the whole nonsense at the end and been like, oh, man, 10. Right. You know, there's no Because like you said, no I way. like, I, the story, this game would have rated higher in my book if the story, if you just remove the whole thing about the, the basement laboratory and you just make it an asylum that fell apart and everybody's crazy... And that's, which is barely a story, granted. But, like, if it's just, like, looking around and finding that, like, oh, these people were, like, treated poorly and then it fell into pieces, I'd be, like, awesome. I would have gone, I would have been, yeah. like, 8 out of 10 on that story. But, like, the fact that they tried to do a story and failed so miserably at it made me rate it so low. And so, like, again, if people are, don't care, like, if, if, like you said, if people will play the first 15 minutes and don't really care, and then maybe go online and read about the story. Like, if, if somebody wrote the story down into an elevator pitch, you could present the story in a pretty decent way. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, it's crazy, like, MK Ultra, CIA, mind control stuff. Like, whoa, cool. And then you don't really go into anything else, and you don't go like, oh, but then there's a nanotechnology host, and then it... And then it uh, Embodies you at the end, and you get shot, and you're like, okay, uh, shut up, shut yeah. up. Yeah. So like, if, yeah, if you're looking at it from like uh, barely pet playing it, and then you just read the story online, like I just, the, I just feel like I feel like it's one of those games that a lot of people yeah. played it, did, or a lot of people reviewed it and talk about it, didn't play it. Like, I just have that feeling, like, yeah. like it's just one of those, like, because it was very difficult to get, go through physically and kind of emotionally right. that a lot of the lot, like a lot of people just haven't beaten it and they're just like no it's that scary game yeah, there's you know? no way that that people that that like don't care about games got through that game like i mean a couple because of the there's reviews... some areas that you're just like you I had to redo like 10 times either that or i was gonna have to look up exactly what to do like like the, like if somebody wrote like Here's the speed run strat for that area or some crap. Like that's the only way By to the get way, through some. Unhelpful areas. because I looked up a speed run to go through stuff. Oh, Do you know yeah. what the speed run involves? Constantly jumping on objects to clip out of the walls. Oh. So it's not even helpful. So I ended up having to watch like people very slowly and scaredly go through the game to figure out what was up. Because this is a game you can't write a fact for. You can't be like, no. go up, go left, go up, go left, go right. up, go right. Exactly. Uh, and, and by the way, if you get seen, go here, go here. It's like, it's it's yep. impossible. You can't no, write a yeah, fact you for can't. it. Yeah, you can't. So that was another rough part where I didn't know what to do. So yeah, guys, like I said, I don't I know. know. I, I feel like I generally <laughs> like a lot of games, but this one I didn't. Here's the interesting news. There is another game that's on this collection. Outlast 2. Right. Now, at the very least... And it's just recently released. Ish, right? yeah. And, yeah, it's, and yeah. it's made for the PS4. Y yes, but I think they all Not, have no, a PC I mean, version. No, no, but I mean, like, it came out... The, like it came out while the PS4 was already yes. out. Okay. Yes. Which makes so, it which makes it a little bit better in terms it's, of quality. It's probably gonna be our next one because I'm almost done with it, and when I'm done, Parker will be going through it, so it'll probably be our next review. And I may here's, or may not finish here's, it. Here's here's <laughs> the 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 I guess good part now that we reviewed the first one. The second one is nothing. Like the well, besides the like the shell. It's right. like the shell only. Right. Everything else is completely just different. The, so. Just the camera stuff. Just the camera stuff. Right. right. It's like right. it, the, it's the, just that it's same a scary game. It's a scary ish. game with a camera. Right. So besides that, but that is like the literal basic shell of it. Everything right. else is different. Right. So could be good. 
Could be bad. Uh, <laughs> could be see. could be a game that Parker doesn't Parker doesn't beat. I will tell you as, I, I'll as say, a brief spoiler. Boy, <laughs> I told Parker that he here's was like, the thing. He like, was like, I had a tough time going through one. I was like, yeah. Um, I, well, I, one I is say, one is first day of school in kindergarten, <laughs> and two is like AP calculus. It's not even close. It's not right. even close. So like, I'll say like the reason that I like. I barely finished one, but it wasn't because it was too scary. It was just annoying. It was just that it was annoying. You might... But, two, like, 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 from what you're saying and stuff, like, the the thing is, like, if two, if one would have been, like, not annoying, I, I still, like, there were some parts that were creepy, so, like, I still would have been f- scared. But there was nothing that was, like unsettling, you know? Yeah. Like, in the way that, like, Amnesia or Machine of Pigs or whatever, like, it's just like, oh, jeez, this is really upsetting. Like, creepy, unsettling kind of stuff. Like, uh, so, yeah. But, anyway, we'll see. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I gotta I gotta say that the... Clearly yeah. they set out to make a game that's, like, scary. See, see and, right? and, I, and I'll end so. it with this one. Outlast 2 is... What I expected from Outlast 1, right. the way people are talking, here's, of course, the ironic part is, before we even start on Outlast 2 next time, the reviews are not much worse, but definitely worse. So, like, <laughs> where, where it's like where it's like 9, 10, 9, 10 for the first one, it's like, eh, 6, 7, 8, 8, 6, 6, 6 Here. kind of thing. So, it's like, literally, if Outlast 2 would have been Outlast 1, I would have been like, I see what the hubbub's about. Right. Like, this is right. like, what an experience, good or bad, what an experience. Right. And I, I was presented Outlast 1, so... <laughs> Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next time for more spooky.